Hello, this is Pete. Welcome to episode 10 of the 12 part EmpowerCast I Work series. In episodes 9 through 12, we're covering image fills. In this episode, we're going to cover the scale to fit option in the image fill. So I'm going to jump in the keynote and just choose a blank template, get rid of the default text boxes, and we're going to go fetch an image. My favorite way to go and fetch an image from the web is using Google. So I'm going to launch Safari. And when you use Safari, you get the Google search box built into the upper right corner. But for anybody not using Safari or if you don't have a built in Google search box, you can just navigate right to Google.com like I've done here. And for our search term, I'm just going to type in Imperial Stormtrooper. So just like in episode nine, I'm going to click on the images link. And here I have about 119,000 images indexed by Google tagged with Imperial Stormtrooper. So I'm just going to dive right in and get the image that I want. And I see a good one here. And as we learned in episode 9, we're not going to simply drag the thumbnail onto the desktop because that's going to get us a very low resolution version of the image. Instead, I'm going to click on the image and use the See Full Size Image link next to the thumbnail. That's going to get me the full size 800 by 600 version. I'm going to drag that onto my desktop to use later in Keynote. I'm going to use the back button to get back to my Google index, or I can use this little orange quick link in the Google search bar, and that'll take me right back to the Google index as well. That saves me from having to click the back button a few times. I want to review some of the options available in the Google Images search engine. Directly beneath the search input field is a safe search indicator. And mine happens to be on moderate. And that's about medium filtering for inappropriate images. To change that, I click on the disclosure triangle. And I have the ability to turn safe search off entirely or turn it all the way up to strict. Moderate's going to occasionally allow questionable material to come through in your searches. Off is going to allow everything to come through unfiltered. And strict is going to filter your results to Google's maximum capability. This is especially important if there are kids around and you want to do what you can to protect them from offensive images. So I'm going to leave mine on moderate and zoom out here. Now I want to have a look at the image options over in the left column here. So I'm just going to zoom in there. If you don't see the image options in the left column in your Google image index, you can use the show or hide options link to have that set of options appear or disappear. My most frequently used option is the size option where I know that the higher resolution image I start with, the better results I'm going to get for my project. So I typically go straight to large. Usually if I don't find what I'm looking for when I'm filtering by large, then I just go to medium and try to find something in the medium range. I can also choose the larger than link and the exactly link. So this is sometimes useful for album cover artwork for iTunes since 300 by 300 is a great size for album cover artwork. I'm just going to return that to any size and we'll move down the column here. Here I have the type of image, and this is interesting. I can choose face, and that will narrow my search down to just images that have faces. And you've got the photo option. You've also got clip art, pretty cool option, as well as line drawing, which typically means just a black and white type of drawing or inked image. So I'm gonna go back to any type there. And then we're going to look at color. So I've got full color, black and white, specific color, which allows me to narrow the search where a specific color of my choosing represents the majority color in the image. Another cool indexing feature from Google. How else are you going to find a Hello Kitty Stormtrooper? All right, I'm going to zoom out and reset options. 
Since we found the image we're looking for, I'm going to head back over to Keynote and I'm going to create a shape on my canvas. I've got a rounded rectangle here that we want to fill with an image. So I'm going to click on that rectangle, go to the graphic inspector and change from color fill to image fill. And we've got the open dialog box, which asks me to go out and choose that image. Since it's on my desktop, I'm just going to click desktop, which is already selected and double click on the image and that'll fill that shape with that image. Now I'm going to be sure that scale to fit is selected. And then here we have a shape with an image fill that will scale to fit. Scale to fit resizes the image within the shape that you've created to ensure that all four sides of the image are within that shape. Since scale to fit makes the rest of the shape transparent, it's a bit difficult to demonstrate the effect of scale to fit on your images. So I've pre-prepared a keynote document that will allow me to better demonstrate. What I've done is made a red fill for the shape. So you can see how resizing the shape affects the graphic fill. So if I take this shape which we filled with the graphic using the scale to fit option and I reduce the width of the shape you can see that the image reduces itself to fit inside of the shape leaving space at the top and bottom of the shape so the image could fit. If I were to do the opposite and reduce the height of the image once it reached the point that all four sides of the image could no longer fit inside the shape, then the image would reduce itself because it's set to scale to fit. So that image will always scale itself to fit inside of that shape you created. Now this gets a bit more complicated when we choose shapes other than a rectangle. So we can see here that no matter how I size that rectangle, that image is going to scale itself to fit inside of whatever shape we choose. So an extreme horizontal rectangle, that image is going to resize itself and scale itself to fit inside that extreme horizontal rectangle. If I made it an extreme vertical rectangle, again that image is going to scale itself to fit inside that extreme vertical rectangle. So a rectangle is probably the simplest demonstration, but I've prepared a few others. For this one I've chosen a circle and I wanted to demonstrate here as I reduce the opacity of the image that the reason we see no red so far in this oval is because the shape touches all four sides of the original image. So that original image fits within this oval because all four sides of the image are still included in the shape. Now watch as I resize that shape. As soon as all four sides of the image can no longer fit inside the shape, it begins to scale the image and we see red above and below the image indicating that that shape is scaling the image so it will always fit within that shape. Notice as with the rectangle no matter how I change the shape of this object the image always scales itself to fit inside. We'll do it one more time with a star. Note here that the entire image is fitting within that star. If I change the shape of that star so it no longer fits within there, again it'll scale so it will fit. My name is Pete. I want to thank you for tuning in to the Empower Cast iWork series episode 10 Image Fills Using Scale to Fit. As always we appreciate your rating and don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified of upcoming episodes. Thanks for tuning in.